morning on the Glass City Grind. It's Cheryl, Charlie, and Lisa. How is everybody doing today? We are good. We <laughs> are good. Charlie is a little out of control this and morning. I don't think he's really out of control. I just think we've had some fun behind the scenes, yeah. and he can't pull it together. He's a little giddy. Okay, she is. you're a culprit, and you're playing innocent. But anyway, good show. How are yes, you guys doing today? We're good. We're ready. <laughs> you know what? I wanted to bring up to you guys. We have such a bu busy show. we uh -huh. we got to go fast for our host chat. Uh-huh. Darn it. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to bring up parents shaming kids. This is like all over Facebook. It's became really, so like if you're disciplining your child or uh -huh. you're catching them doing something, these videos are going viral. Like, oh, so look, look, you know, look at on Facebook, I'm video, I'm posting this up, da, 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 da. I want to know what you really think as a parent. Do you have an opinion on this at all? I do. I don't know. I guess I'd have to watch the video and judge, the, assess the situation. I wouldn't do it. No. And there was a dad that came out and his video went viral. I did see that and one. And he starts like he's going to correct his son, and then he says, listen, you know, I, I, oh my God, I thought it was so beautiful, I must cry. Um, I, I, I don't think it's helpful to publicly shame your People. kids on social yeah, yeah. media. Yeah, like that. Like However, thing. I will teach you a lesson mm. if you don't listen to me. And if it embarrasses you, then tough kick on this. So if, if yeah. I tell you not to do mm. something, and if I say, okay, now look, if you, you gonna quit picking on that girl at school, or I'm gonna make you wear a bikini to class, if you keep doing it, then you know what? I gotta <laughs> yeah. stand by my word and make you do it. I'm not, I, but, so I guess I'm, I'm riding well, the fence. Is, I don't like, know. So during discipline time, which I'm not, I, I, I am a soft mom, but there are certain things I would get very serious about. I would not sit Blake down and go into my mean mommy voice and say, look what you did, and what did I tell you? And now, wave to all your friends, because now you're grounded. I would not do all, I would do all that, but not tape it and put it on Facebook. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know, honestly, if I have time to tape my <laughs> disciplining. Like, right. who's got time for that, really? Time for all that. Right. And, and, and when you're in the middle and you're in the moment, it's not like I'm going to be like, Time out, kids. Let me go get my you know, cell phone. Lip gloss and the camera. Yeah, and, right. and well, powder I do up my mine. face. The police but, did come one time with Blake and some kids. They had went outside and they just wanted to make sure they were okay. Oh, yeah. night. And I did tell the police officers, hold up one second. I got to go get a picture. Right. I mean, if you do... <laughs> that's, yeah, and that's kind of, kind of a rare, funny right. Like, right. thing. Right. But if you do something on... If, if, if you're doing something like those young girls who are on social media, uh, like I'm, I'm 19 years old and I like to get freaking this and the other, yeah. then I will publicly shame you on your page. Facebook page. Yes, I will do I that. If, if that. you want to get on your Facebook page, pretend to be a little hot in the booty little girl, okay, we're going to go on your Facebook page, tell everybody you're not a little hot in the booty girl, and you still use a pacifier at night or right. something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right. I tell all the business. Right. Well, another thing I wanted to bring up that's um, hot right now okay. is Caitlin. Hashtag oh. Bruce Jenner. Lisa? <laughs> Honestly, Lisa, Lisa. I think that she looks very nice. Uh, I kind of like that thing that you posted on Facebook about that she looked really classy. Yeah. And you were saying she was classier than a lot of People biological right. women, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you also posted that I agree and to uh, agree about too is that some people have such an opinion and such negative energy about it when. There's a lot of other things to hate, or a lot of other things that people put on, like yeah. you know, yeah. hip hop, love and love and hip hop, Atlanta, and hip -hop. things like that. Yeah, there's other yeah. things that people do. I, I don't have. I feel like people should be loved, accepted, and yeah, affirmed. I agree. And um, I wish that I could look that good. I, I okay, first of all, no, no, no. With that much makeup and airbrushing, air, I could look that good. That's that ain't Bruce. <laughs> yeah. That ain't Caitlyn or Bruce. That's something they made. That was a whole that is lot the of airbrush. fair cover. So yeah. of course, that's the way to come out. I mean, that's gorgeous. Look at the and route I, pictures. Yeah. I appreciated that he did not spell Caitlyn, even though it's a k sound with, with the a k. k. Yeah. yeah, and he, yeah, he had really like a firm stance about that too. So yeah. I'll tell you real, real quick. I just I, honestly, I mean, wherever, wherever you believe is what you believe, and however you. Whoever you have to answer to is how you have to answer to. I, I personally that. really don't give a crap what's between your legs or who you sleep with. Right. I don't care. Yeah. That's your business. Right. That's between you and whoever else. Yeah. All right. right. So, good show today. Yes. Ready to have some fun? Yes, let's have some fun. I'm so let's excited start our for weekend today. Yes. That's right. All right. We're going to come right back. I'm going to run over and cut my stuff off. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be Carrie when we come back right after these words. Just you got a knife?
It's me, Cheryl, from the Glass City Grind. I'm excited to be joined with Mike from the Toledo Kennel Club. Out here today, Lucas County, thank you for letting us come. You're welcome. Glad you have you here. Welcome to uh, the Toledo Kennel Club Dog Show. Okay, you have to tell us, this happens every year here. It happens every year here for over 50 years. We've been doing uh, the Toledo Kennel Club uh, All Breed Dog Show. It's uh, all breeds in the American Kennel Club as well as obedience dogs Ooh. and uh, rally obedience dogs. Let me here. just say, that's why Scruffy and Cupcake are not here. Those are my two Maltese. They do not behave. Okay, so now what else is going to happen today? Are these people from just Toledo? Or are they from all over? People here come here from all over the country, uh, even sometimes uh, from Canada and uh, other countries as well. Uh, there's a, almost a thousand dogs here, representing probably over 120 different American Kennel Club breeds. Uh, so if you come out, you get a chance to see a lot of variety of dogs from very little Maltese's to the, the big Great Danes. So they do a beauty show? So what this is, is these are dogs that are being put into competition for breeding stock. So it's essentially a beauty show for what's going to produce the, the best of the best of the dogs. So they go through competing against their own breed first, then they go, the winners of those compete against uh, dogs from their, what's called group. So like the uh, herding dogs compete against other herding dogs. And the best of all seven groups then goes in for the coveted best in show at the end of the day. I love the best in show. I love it because this is very similar to what we see when we see it on the, um, Animal Planet when they like have this, the major. And this is just like the Westminster show, yes. the national show you see on TV at Thanksgiving, the same kind of process is what's called the confirmation show or looking at the breeding quality of these dogs. I am actually here with a real celebrity. Maya Angelo. Hi. Oh, and you. Hi, Michael. Hi, Hi sweetheart. How are you? I, ooh, I love it because you call me sweetheart. You are. Oh, hello. And so today here at the Lucas County, she has won already a ribbon. I've seen a ribbon. If someone can just hand it to me, she might get upset I'm touching her ribbon. Is she like that? No, 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 girls no, get candy. no, 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 no. That's her ribbon today. Yeah. So how much time do you spend working with her? Is it, I mean, what all does this entail to have a champion? To have a champion, it requires a lot of work, a lot of work. Grooming, it requires keeping her in proper show weight so that, you know, rip. Hold up. Show weight? Show weight, yeah. Okay, let's move on. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest with you, like the way you have her standing, mm -hmm. the whole body, the whole thing, I mean, like every little detail matters. Right, right. When you're showing them in confirmation, it's important. It's important that they have a beautiful head, a nice, it's like a, a, a show. It's like a pageant. It's a mm -hmm. beauty contest. Yes, that's what's and, going to refer to it as. Right, to us. This is right, a beauty pageant. Right, for them. right. Yeah. So, have you had other dogs? Because mm -hmm. I know you've done this for like, I don't want to say the wrong amount, like 20 or 30 years. Oh, baby, yeah. 40, 40. If God you bless you. You could just me. call me baby one more yeah, time. Uh, baby. What kind of show am yeah. I doing right here? Big baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I got this assignment. Charlie, you poor little thing, and Lisa. I am so excited to be joined now with an official judge. I thought I was a judge, but then, Michael, you are the official judge today. Yes, I was judging some hounds today, some working breeds, and some terrier breeds, and later this afternoon, I'm judging the hound group. Now, how long have you been doing this? Since February of 1984. And what do judging. you what do you enjoy? What, what is there like one or two things you enjoy the most about judging? Well, it's meeting the new people, new folks that come in to uh, show their dogs, and helping them along the way, you know, to enhance our sport. That's uh, you know a representative and a, sort of a diplomat for the American Kennel Club and all the kennel clubs that you judge for. Right. Can you tell me what do you think about Maltese? Am actually, I allowed to get that on camera? <laughs> yes, you certainly are. Uh, actually, I've judged a few of those along the way. Uh, they're excellent companion dogs. Um, you have to be very dedicated to, to grooming. Yes. And it's not only therapeutic for the dog, it's very th therapeutic for the individual. Right. Because it's very, very relaxing. You know, something you can do every day, you know, either on the couch or a table at home. Uh, the dogs love it. You know, it's very good for them. It's, and it's soothing for the individual. Right. Well, I just want to thank you for taking time. Um, we've had a, the Glass City Grinds had a great time here today. And thank you for stopping to talk You're to us. More than welcome. We hope you My enjoy pleasure. the rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much. Hey, that's all from the Toledo Kennel Club here. I'm here with Ozzy. He's getting ready to go to obedience, whatever. They're going to judge him, so I can't 
Big shout out to Barb Monroe. Thank you guys. Hey, thanks for sticking with us here on the Glass City Grind. It's me, Cheryl Charlie. We are excited to be joined now by Victoria, Victoria. our special realtor here. Yeah, our, our, our soon to be married Victoria. But by the way, oh, congratulations yeah, on that. Thank you. Um, so, now, we got I, into it. Yeah, I, I, okay. I know the real estate market at one point, not too in the far past, wasn't exactly great. And I understand, am I right in finding out that it's really a seller's market now? Meaning people are actually, are there people getting what they're asking for their houses? They are getting and then getting some that the market has been so crazy just recently that one property we went to had five offers on it. Another property had three offers. Wow. Another property had another three offers. So the houses that show really well are selling quickly and getting multiple offers. This is the best time to be on the market. Right now, the number of buyers that are out there um, far exceeds the number of homes, but soon wow. that number will change. It won't take long for about 30 to 45 days and that buyer number will drop off and then so? the inventory will go back up. Okay, mm. okay. now you, you mentioned that, you know, how houses show. Is, are there some tips that you yeah. may even give sellers that they should do, like just standard things you have to do when you're trying to sell your house? Two things are the biggest things that don't cost and that's clutter and clean. Oh. If you have a spotless house, what I call Q-tip clean and get rid of all of the clutter, less is better. Rule of thumb, anything smaller than the size of a football should go off the shelf. So oh, if you know you're okay. moving and you're gonna be boxing up anyway, then go through and just have one vase on a table or one big bowl or something, but less is always better. It's a lot easier to clean and it's a lot easier. Get rid of all of your personal photos. I mean, we've all heard that, but I can that. tell you every time, that's what people spend their time looking at and not looking at the house. At the house. Mm -hmm. I we, uh, yeah, that. and then we have a we have a professional photographer, so the photos are key, and then a stager. So in all of our listings, we'll have a professional stager come th come into the house and walk through it room by room with you, mm -hmm. um, and stage each room or give you notes on how to stage it. Do sellers ever, once a stager comes through, say, "Wow, after I've moved this and done that and decluttered this, I want to stay. Might, I stay here now." Does that ever happen? They do, but they normally don't want to stay. I mean, they normally <laughs> they don't stay. But they do look at it in a whole new light. Uh -huh. The staging is so big that there were two houses that had expired with other agents that I listed. Mm -hmm. The first one being vacant, we brought a stager in and we brought some furniture in. Buyers that had looked at that house while it was listed with another agent had ruled it out. Then we listed it. It looked like a new listing, a new agent coming up on the market. Now mm. that it was staged, they went through it, not realizing they had already been through it. Oh, wow. They pulled up in the driveway and said, you know what? I think we'll go back through anyway. They wow. went through and wrote an offer with that house being staged now completely showed different to them. Uh-huh. Same thing on one that people lived in. There was a lot of those mauves, the blue, the outdated oh, yeah. things mm -hmm. of the yeah. 80s, uh -huh. the ducks, the wicker. <laughs> um, she was at my house. <laughs> She's being honest. <laughs> uh -huh. We said got, tell that. got rid of all of that. Uh -huh. Same thing happens. Buyers went through it then, ruled it out. They came back through it, not knowing it was, it thought it was a new listing and wrote an offer on it and how it just didn't show the same. So when we think they can overlook, they it's really tough to overlook those things. Wow. Mm -hmm. We've got some things that we also want to talk to you that don't involve uh, real estate. So we're going to have to have you back on yes. the show because that I think is, I mean, real estate is great, yes. but I think that's so much more passionate than what we're going to talk about um, next. But I have one quick question. I know we have to go, I'm sorry. As a, if, if I'm a buyer, when I make that offer, do I need to be aggressive with my offer with this market now, or can I, do I still try to play the game? Mm. You know what? Every house, there's no set oh, okay. that you just do. Every house is different. So I guess you would take the advisement of your agent to where, like on this, I could say on those multiple offers, or if that house was a really good deal, mm -hmm. I could say, if you want this house, here's what you're, you know, what it's going to take in my opinion. Um, or otherwise that this house has been on the market for 322 days, you know, let's go low and see where they're at. So really each one is going to be different and it's going to be where it's priced at according to the market and the agent's going to be able to advise you. Cool. Mm, that's cool. what we need. A good agent. Like Man. Thank you. We need a team. I, we need a team. <laughs> All right. Listen. I need uh, my house staged. <laughs> <laughs>
I deep had, water. I had a hard time selling my car. Um, well, thank, thank you, you for so joining much. us. Yeah, oh, really it's my pleasure. It. Yes. We have to have you back. For more information, her information is right here on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Um, we'll be right back with more of the Glass City Grind. Don't go anywhere. Right back, right after these words. Yeah, I was, someone, when they told me that people are getting... Hey, Buckeye Cable viewers, we're waking you up with love, laughter, and entertainment. Every Saturday morning at 8 a.m., Sundays, Encore at noon, and anytime on Video On Demand. It's the Glass City Grind, Toledo's favorite local television show. Hey guys, Lisa here, and I am in downtown Sylvania at Trio with Chef Brett. Hello. And you're going to make a dish for us today. Exactly. What I'm going to be making today is a sun-dried tomato and angel hair nests Ooh. with sautéed garlic shrimp. Okay, now and this is something that you're going to teach me so I can go home and do this? Absolutely. It's a okay. rather quick dish with prep aside. All right. As far as cooking it and getting it onto the plate, we're talking generally about three to four minutes. Okay, awesome. I can do that. I can do three to four minutes, you guys. This is yeah, this is not too bad. It's something I've done it by the hundreds, literally, okay. made these little nets. So it's something I'm familiar with and honestly one of my favorite pasta dishes. Okay, awesome. Yep. Well, let's get started. All right, let's do this. I've got my water to a boil already. Very important. I want a rolling boil for pasta always. Okay. I'm going to salt it a little bit. Now that's something I don't do. And it gives some flavor do. to the pasta. Like okay. if you're blanching vegetables, you do the same thing. It helps bring out the color in the vegetable and give a little bit of flavor. Oh, that's a good tip. I'm going to oil my pan with some extra virgin olive oil here. Not a whole lot. Okay. I'm going to go over about a moderate heat. I don't want to get too crazy because I don't want to scorch the garlic. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to start with here is I'm going to add some shrimp to this. The that shrimp looks so wonderful. Shrimp. One of the benefits of keeping the pan heated up ahead of time okay. is it's going to go rather quickly. As you can see, we're getting our color on the shrimp already. Okay. About halfway cooked on my shrimp. Now is when I want to start adding my other ingredients. Here. Okay. So I'm going to go garlic first. Okay. Oh, I love garlic. As soon as I start to see some color on the garlic, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of white wine. I kind of want to stop that cooking process so we don't bring out the bitter flavors of the garlic. Okay. At this point. I'm going to go ahead and start dropping my pasta. So we're looking at about eight ounces of pasta there. Okay, into this. I'm going to basically, items that cook, take the longest to heat up or cook, I'm going to go with first. Okay. So get a few olives in there, a little tomato. Get my spinach in here last. A little bit more white wine. A lot of pesto. Okay. I need to be able to separate it enough, just enough, so the pasta can get in between it. A little salt and pepper, a little bit of fresh basil, actually a lot of fresh basil. I'm going to kill my heat. Never go wrong with that. Pasta's good. Turn that off. I'm going to bring my, oh I can let you do anything. I'll show oh. you how to make a nest. Okay, oh yay, I'm excited. All right. so I'm going to go right into this bowl here. Okay. Pasta in. You can either use the rubber spatula, which is going to be a little more excuse me, gentle on your pasta. Okay. Or if you're brave, you can get your hands down in there, double up some gloves, which resists heat pretty well. Okay. But I do want to get a little bit of this heat off there so I can actually twist these things without scorching my hand. As you can see, I'm kind of twisting it before I stand it up. Okay. Once I stand it up. Oh, I love this. There's a good one. That's a good size here. I'm gonna do one more. That is such a neat technique to make it look so pretty. Don't okay. Be shy. Here we go. Let's see. So you just a nice big scoop. Kind of force the fork a little bit, just like that. You got it. You got it. Okay. Hey, I am Italian, so I should be able to. <laughs> and what I generally try to do is take my outside fingers and pull it down, so it tightens it up a little bit right before I place it. Okay. Exactly. Okay, let's see here. Oh, victory. A little bit of these shrimps here. And while you're doing this, you were telling me a little bit about that here at Trio, you guys offer cooking classes. Absolutely, twice a month, we do a, well, we do two classes a month, I should say. One being a children's class and one being an adult's class. Generally, the adult class falls on the first Monday of every month. Okay. 
And the children's class falls two weeks later, usually. And a little garnish here. A couple drizzles of this oil here. All right, guys. Well, you saw it here. You can stop on out to Trio, visit their website, or come on in for a cooking class during the month. We'll see you right back after the break. And we're thrilled. We have not seen him in a while. I know our our favorite. personal and our favorite, Dr. Bob, the veterinarian. Well, thank you. I am really happy to be back, and it has been a long time. I know you can't do that anymore. We have questions. We have pets to take care <laughs> that's of. That's right, here. exactly. So uh, <laughs> that's what the office says occasionally. You're away too much, and, right. then, and then others say, can't, "Aren't you going away soon?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was really fascinated listening to uh, Victoria and talking about the reality business and the staging portion of yes. it. And one of the things that uh, she didn't mention is, "What do you do with your pets right. if, your is, if your house is if your house is?" It has pets in it and if you're going to have showings when you're away at work mm -hmm. and so we have a service and we've worked with a couple of realty companies where they'll, they'll call us up in the morning hey I've got my dog and I've got uh, a showing this afternoon what can I do and so we have a program called Never Home Alone they can bring the their pet in so the cats get really stressed when there are strangers mm -hmm. walking around mm -hmm. the house you can bring them in and board them or you can bring the dog in if they uh, pass the uh, the test they can go to daycare for a couple hours if oh you want goodness. or they can just stay with us and we'll feed them and treat them and give them a lot of attention let's go back to passing the test sure because you know you know my little scruffy yeah. cupcake I don't know if they would pass that test. Well, it's a, you know, it's a compatibility test basically so that they can uh, we know that the, they're not going to be snarly and we've had to, we've had to kick some dogs out because they oh. just aren't good citizens at daycare. <laughs> detention. <laughs> they're, they're not good citizens. Doggy at detention. I real quick on that. I actually think it is me. Like I think if you were with my dogs, well of course they do obey you when they come see you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when other people around my dogs are fine. I think if I'm with them and you come in the room, they're, they're, they're just yeah. not well behaved. It's so much how they interact with other dogs too, because yeah, you know, like my son's got a, a boxer puppy, that boxer puppy got kicked out of daycare, <gasps> you know, because he's just a little too aggressive at this point. And some, and we have, we mix the sizes so they all get along together. And then if the dog is a little too rowdy, we just have to say, he got to grow up, go to obedience class and get mm -hmm. just a little bit more mature before he can come back. So the key is, you know, if you've got cats, let's make sure the house doesn't smell get the litter yes. box get the litter boxes out there get the dog out of course you know you got a lot of dog hair mm -hmm. that's the keeping it clean you know q-tip clean she said yes. those things are you know we we can help with that by getting the dog out of the house when you're when you have showings so you can drop them off on the way to work we have 24 we have 24 7 staffing so that wow, means that if you had, if you went to work at five o'clock you could drop your dog off if you're going to have a dog showing and we have people doing that all the they time they just call your office they just right call. There? Mm -hmm. okay now if, okay. yeah and do you guys have the information on your website as well oh yeah okay that's fantastic that is a great service that yeah. is i mean because i've looked for homes before and immediately when i come in because i have allergies uh to cats i'm like oh my gosh they have a cat i don't even want to it's hard for me to even stay and look at the house mm -hmm. yeah. because i just feel like oh and of course you don't want to have a, a litter box sitting around even if it's even if it's clean mm -hmm. you don't want to have a litter box there it, it, it it's an alert for somebody that may have allergies and if you've yes. cleaned well you can certainly clean a house up after a cat after they've moved out and and deal with that yeah right so right. that's just i think that's it's part of the staging chat. and we're it happy is. to be a part of I that i love that mm -hmm. yeah that is such great. a nice service now you mentioned something about the litter boxes and this is interesting because we talked about this a little bit before you know we started taping we had a viewer question come in mm. and they are asking is one litter box per cat enough to have in the home the rule of thumb is one litter box plus uh, per cat plus one additional so it's <gasps> N plus one, and you don't want them all together because you don't want to line them up like porta potties at, yes. down, at, down at a festival. Like here's the you, you, right, you want to spread them. You want to spread <laughs> them out that. so that you know if you have a multiple cat household, they aren't having to cross territories. Um, maybe there's a dog in the house, and that dog is really fascinated with the litter box and is standing okay. there. Cats like their privacy, and they want to be able to take their time and construct and and do those things. Okay. So cleanliness is also extraordinarily important. I mean, if you only have one litter box, it better be really big. Uh -huh. And it uh, needs to be ex 
excruciatingly clean. Okay, mm. so really, like I have one can at home in one litter box, so today you should I another. need to go out and get another one. And you put do, it somewhere and else. You know, yes. put it somewhere else in the house, okay. another part, maybe a place where it spends a lot of time so that, yep. uh, you know, if it's really got to go and it doesn't want to have to uh, uh, get to the litter box or should something happen and the doors close and you can't get there oh. for some reason, it, it, there's an alternative. Oh, rather than, that. uh, rather than the laundry or the carpet or the bed, yeah. the center of the bedspread. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so this one is a family formerly had a cat and the cat had some liver issues, liver failure. So it had a lot of bathroom problems in the house. Mm. So they have cleaned up, you know, since and the house does not smell, but now they're looking to get a dog and they are wondering, is there going to be leftover stuff that maybe even though they cleaned as best they can, Will the dog mark its territory and sense those smells? Oh. Yeah. Well, it may not be so much a dog marking a cat's territory. The real key is how how thorough did they do their cleaning? That, okay. that becomes the, the the function. In other words, if they just had the carpets clean, you know, and, and even if they had a professional cleaning service in, that may not be adequate. If there was a lot of messes, you know, and they were all in a similar place, mm -hmm. um, they, they pr may need to replace the carpet and the underlayment. And in some cases, they literally need to go all the way down to the floor and uh, use uh, use a, uh, an enzyme deodorizer on it, wow. and then seal it uh, okay. with a, with a sealer. So you seal that plastic plywood and then you put your new carpet in. So a lot depends on, on the length of the time the damage is and, and whether it's one spot or it's all over the place. Okay. And there are, you know, there are, if your dog does that or your cat does that at home, you've got to go in and make sure that you, you destroy the odor molecule. And, you know, a lot of people will say use vinegar or a lot of people will say use ammonia. That's not correct. Okay. Um, vinegar is acidic. And, and it won't mask an odor and, and urine is, is acidic as well. So you're just kind of contributing to it. What you need to use is an enzyme deodorizer. So I've been advised by people that are professional carpet cleaners, use a little bit of white dilute white vinegar to make sure that that spot's well acidified because if the carpet's been been cleaned, that's mm -hmm. that's alkaline. And so that may prevent mm -hmm. the enzyme deodorizers from working to their maximum effect. Okay. because they work in an acidic environment, warm them to a to the body temperature, soak it really, really well, cover it up with plastic and let it sit for a while and then soak it up really wow. thoroughly. Wow, that's all, fantastic. It's all to necessary know. to be really thorough if you've got a strong odor. And if you've got a puppy that's soiling on the carpet, it's really important that you get the, that scent out of there because that becomes a trigger so that the next time that they okay, may want right, to go. Right. Wow. Well, hey, these are fantastic tips. Thank you always for coming yes. on and sharing with us. Yes. And obviously, we have lots more to learn from you, so we'll have you back soon. I'll yes, look forward yes. to that. Thank you so much, Dr. Great. Bob. And we'll see you back right after this commercial break. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for sticking with us today. We hope you enjoyed our show we hope you enjoyed of course the they did of course they did yeah who wouldn't now we got tips about selling houses pets and we got a great recipe from trio yes so we this was a great show and what a way to kick off your weekend make sure to check us out online go to our website like us on facebook and follow us on twitter have a great day everybody bye, -bye. bye. see you next week